Greetings nerdy list aficionados and welcome back to Talk to Nerd. Today we are once more talking superpowers. Now not all heroes have them, but for those that do, they are a powerful weapon in their arsenal. However, some powers are a bit less conducive to cool than others. Some may even say dumb. Now of course as always caveats, you can make almost any power seem really cool if you write it incorrectly, but at first glance these abilities may be less than stellar. I'm Sasha and these are the top 10 dumbest superhero superpowers. Let's have fun with this, it's a good time. No shade intended, except to Batman's chair. All the shade there, always. Number 10. Empathy Empathic powers tend to flounder when they are on their own, hence in the superhero world you will often find them paired with other abilities. For example, while empathy may be a large part of Raven's abilities, it is not the only part. She can also influence emotion, and also her soul self, and a whole host of demonic abilities. All of this is cause if you just have empathic abilities, you run into the Deanna Troy situation. I'm sensing hostility, Captain. Now, knowing someone's emotional state would be an asset, but without even telepathy to back it up, you'd still be kind of guessing, like, are they mad because of what happened in your battle or negotiation, or because the store ran out of hazelnut milk? You don't know. Also, you can't just yell it out. Hold up, Titans, he's sad. It's a very I know something you don't know maybe kind of power. However, as soon as you partner up with something else, it goes up a whole other level. Number 9. Immortality Now, being immortal doesn't always have the guarantee of coming with eternal youth, or lack of pain or disease, or even not being able to die. People just assume. But what if you're immortal and just becoming a prune? Or you get sick and then you're just sick forever, living as one massive tumor. Or you can still die painfully but then get resurrected again. This one like before needs some kind of backup, super strength, youth, Lazarus pits, anything. And you still need to contend with the existential dread of losing all those you care about and your connection to humanity. If you feel like you can't keep up with music after like a decade, imagine keeping up with people and trends after a century. Full time job. Could you stay good? Or do you think you'd get a little weird if you were immortal? Me? Full Louis de Pointe de Lac, cabin full of books, life goals. Number 8. Precognition Now precognition sounds like a great ability. You can see the future and then you can change it. But no, think about it. Either way, you've been cassandra -ed. So you see the future and you change it. Well that means the future is fluid. So how good was your prediction in the first place? Did you change it? Would it always have changed? Or the other option, the future is inevitable. No matter what you do, you are hurtling towards that timeline. Heck, maybe even you trying to change it sets it on that path. Great. Well, what good is knowing then? It is more useful if you can change things, but then you have to live in a world of all these shifting potentialities. I guess it would also depend on how strong the ability was. Like, what if you were seeing things you couldn't exactly place, like somebody brushing their teeth, but evilly, but with no other clues? Then someone might try to steal you, and that might set off a civil war too or a minority report. It's a whole thing. More trouble than it's worth. Number 7. Color Manipulation So when we're talking about this, we're talking mostly about the color kid, who can change the color of any object at will. Now cool for your career as an interior decorator extraordinaire, but for your crime fighting career, less so. So this character once used this to mask a MacGuffin so that the villain couldn't find it. But I mean, this is a stopgap measure. He also tripped someone, cause he blended an object into the floor. So distraction at best, annoyance at worst. Now you could work this, but you'd have to be one think on your toes color manipulator. So many other careers, children's entertainer, that would be another good one. Teach the young ones all about mixing colors. Number 6. Omniscience So omniscience sounds great, you know everything, but it tends to freeze a person in place a bit, enraptured by all the knowledge they have, especially if they have a certain chair. To quote Batman, I am never getting out of this chair. Three Jokers, Joe Chill, sitting next to Green Lantern on a couch construct. Hal having to give Bruce his ring to will himself out of the knowledge chair is still one of the most hilarious things ever. Also, you can kind of plan for everything if you know everything, so it also gets a bit less interesting on that front narratively as well. This is why, with rare exceptions, this tends to be a fleeting ability, and then the hero is left trying to grasp at all the straws of the knowledge they once had. Also, it tends to be shown as pushing the heroes away from their heroic natures, for knowledge is power and absolute power corrupts, absolutely. Number 5. Organ Rearrangement 
Now this is great in battle. Someone's going in for a kill shot, just relocate your heart or whatever needs to be relocated because you know, they're coming at you. But the question is, how quickly does this happen? Is this organ teleportation or more like the slow, progressive slog of it through your body? Can you feel it? That'd be really gross if you could. However, when else do you need this? I mean, aside from pranking purposes, terrify your friends and family. Where is your heart? How are you alive? Surprise, ma, I'm a mutant. The thing for characters who have this ability is it usually isn't brought up until absolutely necessary. So you can get a bit of deus ex organ rearrangement. Number four, charisma. But charisma is not a power, you say. Some people are just charming. But in the comic book world, some people are more than charming. They may have magnetic personalities or other abilities that make them appealing to others, sometimes pheromones. The thing with this ability is it puts you in a position where you have to question their interactions, like do these people like them because they're nice? Or is it because there's some sort of influence going on? It veers pretty far into the realm of manipulation if used that way, and far away from heroic territory. And then you end up with Star Fox. Never go full Star Fox. Because essentially, then you've just gone purple man. Just let people have baseline charisma, that's fine. Average charm can feel like a superpower anyway. Number three, power rings. Now the power ring is a fantastic weapon, and one that is immensely powerful. I mean, with it, the limits are literally only one's imagination. However, sometimes the constructs can get a little silly. People creating whole trains and cars around themselves and the like. Plus, without the rings, not all the lanterns have backups, not even some extra martial arts training. Simon Baz carried a gun for a bit, but that didn't go over well. Also, a couple of issues into having it, he shot and killed Sinestro. Thankfully, they were already in the realm of the undead, so it didn't have a permanent effect. But still, he would eventually be convinced he didn't need it. Kyle has some crazy constructs, because he's an artist. So the idea is that he would naturally have these really intricate designs because of his artistic nature. Okay, tell me that during a hostage situation under hostile fire. Really cool weapons, not always used to the best of their abilities. Number two, Eye Boy. So Eye Boy is covered in eyes, eyes everywhere. You can see everything from all directions. So one would assume your brain would also be honed to accommodate this newfound skill. But also, you'd be so vulnerable, all over, so many places for people to poke. And they don't even have to come for you. You could just fall over, smooshed. This, however, is a huge surveillance advantage, but you have to make sure your eye person doesn't get rushed into combat, or it could go very poorly, very quickly. Now for Eye Boy, they amped up these powers, gave the poor kid a break, and he can see more than just the average human with all of these eyes. He can see things like magic and people's personalities, so it's like an extra perception on top of just having more eyes or tracking, just a whole host of things. Make up for what would otherwise be just being ten-eyed man, but all over your body. And number one, niceness vibes. Feel the vibe, man. This was an ability particularly highlighted by the third gold star, who just wanted the universe to be a kind and decent place, which made him the arch enemy of Lobo, and the two would regularly get into dust-ups. Goldstar was even drawn to be the opposite of Lobo. He can encourage people to be nice, because he emits niceness vibes, but they most certainly do not work on the main man. Goldstar would routinely get his butt handed to him, because the writers did not like him, and were just waiting for the day that he would kind of fade into obscurity. Which isn't very nice. See, his vibes don't work at all. Okay, so those were 10 dumb superpowers. Share some powers you think are lackluster down below. Thanks so much for watching Top 10 Nerd. I'm Sasha, and don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and hit that bell notification so that you never miss a vid. And we'll see you again soon. Bye bye.